Hello everyone and welcome. So my last video was me talking about my top games, the Flash Generation. I didn't really do too good of a job in that video, so hopefully I do a better job of listing my best games of 2014. I gotta take my phone out of my pocket. It causes interference with my headphones for some reason, but hopefully I do a better job with this list. So uh, these to be my best games 2014. I didn't play all of the games that released this year. I didn't really play that many games that released this year. You know, money. I don't. I don't have a job yet. I need to get. I need to get one of those. I'm 17. I need to uh, obtain a job. Uh, but this one will be uh, probably. I. I didn't have a lot of them, so I've picked about seven games that I've played. So, yeah. So I'm gonna be going through these games all the way down to the very best one. So let's start with number seven. And this game was a bit surprising to me because this is a PC game made by the folks over at Blizzard Entertainment, I believe, and uh, this game surprised me because I don't like a lot of card games. Like, I've played the Pokemon card game a little bit with Chris, I've played Magic the Gathering, like one game of it with Chris, I have a deck, but I just don't like card games that much. But this is basically a card game, but on a computer, and it's called Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, and it's a PC game. It's basically a card game, uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, I will probably tell you guys to go look it up if you want some more information on it, but basically, uh, you get a bunch of cards and you attack the dude and kill him. That's, I, I can't really explain it that well. It's hard to explain a game, but you can go look it up. It's a very fun card game that I see myself playing every once in a while. It's a very fun game, and it released this year, so, yeah, it kind of surprised me. So, number six was a part of that hype train. <laughs> a very overhyped game that, um, yeah, it was just very overhyped. We're talking about a uh, watch, watchdogs, watchdogs, or whatever. Uh, yeah, this game was a little hyped. Is this game right here? It was a little hyped up. I, uh, the E3 trailer had some darn good graphics, and uh, you get the game in your hands, and uh, all of those graphics are gone. <laughs> that was what. Uh, yeah, it, it was a little hyped. Uh, the storyline, it was okay. It really wasn't the best storyline. Uh, what saved this game for me was just how much fun it was to actually play the game. All the hacking and stuff like that. Even though now there's not anything to do for me anymore in this game. Like, I've basically exhausted this game uh, completely. I've done everything. All I haven't done is that T-Bone expansion. I don't see myself even buying that expansion. But I've pretty much done everything in this game. It was pretty hyped up, honestly. Uh, that's why it's number six, obviously. Uh, it was a fun game, very funny game, but it was very hyped. I, I don't even play online. I, I pop it in every once in a while to drive around and hack other stuff, but it was just a very, very hyped game. Where am I going to put all these games at? I'm going to put them over here. Put them right there. How about that? Okay, <clears throat> so coming in at number five, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare on that Xbox One. So <clears throat> this game kind of surprised me because... Uh, 2013's Call of Duty game, which was Call of Duty Ghost, kinda, kinda meh, not really one of my favorite Call of Duties, and I've liked most of the Call of Duty games, but Ghost really, it's okay, it's a decent game, but definitely not my favorite Call of Duty, I will play it every once in a while, but uh, this game here is definitely the best Call of Duty game they've released so far of the next generation consoles, and Treyarch, you better do something good, like maybe a you know, World at War 2. I forgot to mention that in my last generation games or last generation video, but Treyarch, if you want a oh, top advanced warfare, make a World at War 2. Trust me. But yeah, this game is really awesome. I really enjoyed this game. The campaign was surprisingly good. A uh, surprisingly very fun campaign. The multiplayer is a cool thing. This is now you got those exo suits and stuff like that. Uh, it's very fast-paced multiplayer now. It's even faster than before. <clears throat> it's just very fun. I mean, it it's, it feels kind of like it's going to be that uh, Call of Duty 4. Of, the, of these consoles, you know how Call of Duty 4 was that last great Call of Duty game. I feel like this is kind of like that game for the PS4 and the Xbox One. That's just my opinion. Everyone's opinion will probably be different. So, number four, another another game that uh, has been on the hype train. This game here was a game I was very excited for. Destiny on that PlayStation 4. This game. This game was pretty hyped up. Like, Bungie... The Halo, the makers of Halo, teaming up with Call of Duty Activision people. This game. So, in my beta review, you know, the beta, once you've played about level 8, once you've played a couple, like, uh, all the Earth missions and stuff like that. In the beta, my thoughts on the beta video, I said that I think Destiny has created their masterpiece. I still think this is Bungie's masterpiece game. Like, 
the story kind of lacking a little bit. Even, I think, I, I bought both expansions, uh, that expansion pass. I don't know how much the story that's going to add, but the story is a little bit lacking. Like, there's a lot more they could have told about the storyline to get people more immersed in the game. But what it takes this game is just the gameplay in general, is why I think this game is Bungie's Mastery. Because they took all they've learned from Halo and, you know, put it together with a bunch of games like Borderlands and all that, with the looting system and, you know, the RPG elements and stuff like that. I feel like this is still their their masterpiece game. I'm holding this really weird in the camera. Uh, but I feel like this is still their masterpiece game. Uh, they did a very good job with this game. Uh, the storyline, of course, I mean, lacking the Crucible is so much fun. Uh, like, I play this game, like, I have a level 24 Warlock. I, I don't play this game, like, all the time, obviously. It's hard to get light in this game, man, uh, to get your armor, uh, stuff like that. But I'm level 24. And I still play this game with my level 24 character with my cousin. My cousin's only like level 15. I still play this with him even though I don't earn any XP. I still get, I'm able to like upgrade my guns and all that and my armor. It's just so much fun. It's killing everything in Destiny. So I feel like this is their masterpiece. Coming at number 4, you know, Destiny. Good job, Bungie. Activision, uh, I guess they're okay publisher. I don't know. Number 3, though. I haven't played a lot of this game. I hate to admit it, but... This is number three, and I still haven't played that much of it, because uh, I don't play a lot of handheld games all the time, because I, like, I got a lot of these PS4 and Xbox One stuff I play, but I'm going to start playing this a lot more. I need to, because this game's freaking legit. It's coming at number Thress, Pokemon Omega Ruby. This is like my top game, I think, for 2014, and it lived up to that. It's a very, very, very awesome remaster, remake of the... Uh, Pokemon Ruby, which is my favorite Pokemon game to date. Uh, this is just a very beautiful game. Just for the 3DS. It's basically just like playing through uh, Ruby again. Uh, but it's on the 3DS and it's better. It has the primals and all that. I need to start playing this more. I need to tell myself that. Uh, but it, it is definitely awesome that they remade Ruby and Sapphire. So, yeah, that's number, uh, that's number three. So, number two. Ooh, this is going to be that controversy on this list, I think. Maybe be, maybe Call of Duty being above Watch Dogs might be another controversy. But this is going to be a controversy. <sighs> this game. Metal, if I can put this in the camera. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Or uh, Metal Gear Solid $30 Zeroes. Or Metal Gear Solid 30 Zeroes. Whatever you want to call this game. This game is basically the prequel to the my most anticipated game ever. Um... No, we saw it's not ever. It's a very, it's a game I'm very anticipated for. You might see it in my next list. Hmm. Anyways, this is like the prequel to it. Thirty dollars. This is a thirty dollar game, I believe, and you get basically. I beat the main storyline about an hour, and then there's all these extra missions. So a lot of people were saying that this game was not worth thirty dollars. I feel like it kind of was worth $30 because the mission took an hour but there were the extra missions but the one thing that I keep, I keep coming back to this game because I keep I still keep playing this game not only is Metal Gear Solid my favorite franchise of all time not only is this game freaking awesome uh, but it's replayable it, this game has a decent amount of replayability to it I can go back and replay all the missions and use different guns and use different character skins and generally have a lot of fun take different approaches take different approaches to the, uh, the, the, the missions and stuff like that I can have a lot of fun so, when Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain comes out, uh, I don't even know. That game is just going to blow every other game out of the water when it comes out. I believe it comes out in March, maybe. Maybe. Maybe only a couple more months, and then we'll get the amazing Phantom Pain. So, let's move on to number one. So, number one was a bit of a surprising game to me. Now, hi guys, you guys might be saying, why wasn't Grand Theft Auto 5 on your, la or your favorite game of the last generation? Why was GTA 4? on there and not GTA 5. Well, that's because my number one best game of 2014 that I've played is the remastered version of Grand Theft Auto 4 on PS4 obviously because that's what I have it for. This game came in full swing. <laughs> Man, it, this game, not only was this game fun on the PS3, like I have a PS3 over there that I'm pretty sure is like dying. I think it's like a super modded uh, used game. It's, it's, from, it's used from GameStop. I think someone tried to mod that thing and it, I think it's slowly dying. Very slowly. It has like red lines on the screen to play games and GTA. A lot of the games lag on it. This game on PS4 is worth the purchase, even if you beat the game on the PS3 or Xbox 360. This game is worth the purchase because the first person mode, though, that's what warranted this game and purchase for me because it, it feels kind of like I'm playing a different game when I am playing in first person. It's just, it works so well with Grand Theft Auto. And uh, the storyline's still awesome. The multiplayer, I don't play a lot of multiplayer. I mess around in single player usually, but this game. 
this game is definitely a uh, a good purchase for you guys. So I would definitely recommend uh, buying this game. So I actually think uh, I'm actually going to redo uh, that last game's last generation video. Uh, so it kind of I guess ignore maybe what I said in the beginning about it being a bad because I'm going to redo it actually. But thanks for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. But yeah, this is definitely a top game of last generation. So thank you guys so much for watching. I still got one more list video after this, and that's going to be, um, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you guys what it is. You've probably already seen it. It is going to be the most anticipated games 2015. So uh, thanks for watching, and I guess uh, peace out.